from the studios of the Department of Communication in Phillipsburg. Welcome to Prime Minister Talks with Honorable Prime Minister Silveria Jacobs. Welcome to PM Talks, episode 19. I am Silveria Jacobs, your Prime Minister, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Minister Female, Minister <laughs> Justice Anna Richardson. <laughs> As you may know, thank you for being here. Yes, thank you to Pia. Good afternoon. Yes, it's your first, it but is. hopefully not your last. Um, she's been ducking me, let me say. Um, she's really I've been trying to get her on, but she's work been bogged down. And I must say, I admire her work ethic, going after it all day, all the time. I think that's one of the things that we as women bring to the field. That is sometimes and, um, misunderstood. Yes. OK, so we'll clarify all of that okay. today. All right, so you've been minister now just over three months. Mm -hmm. And while I was in the Netherlands, Is they it highlighted, months? yes, it was 100 days. Okay. 100 days have passed. So how was your first experience coming in under this so very heavy ministry of the Ministry of Justice? Yeah, heavy is a good word. Uh, 700 plus staff members, uh, seven different departments to deal with. Um, it is the largest ministry in, in the, uh, the organization. And um, there is a lot that comes at you very quickly constantly and um all of it is priority all yes. of it has been yes. uh um you know needing <laughs> to have it. a certain type of attention and not taking away anything from anyone that has made attempts or has been dealing or did deal with it um to the point that they could um but i i do have a very aggressive approach to what needs to get done uh, constant. I just have to apologize to my staff oftentimes because um, so you're working them to the bone. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for me, you know, it needs to get done, um, and uh, just really just staying steadfast and working at it. Okay, so the reality is today the function book um, was the main topic. Um, is. I believe you received a letter from the police um, union. And though we've been having several discussions with unions, mm -hmm. including the police unions mm -hmm. in the broader sense, the police unions came to you directly related to the function books. Yes. There was a letter that was stamped in on the 7th. The same letter was stamped in on the 8th. The same letter was stamped in on the 13th. And the same letter was stamped in on the 16th. Oh. Uh, yeah. And um, the letter came with quite a, a demand to it, like, sign now. And that is unrealistic. And um, with all honesty, it's not a matter of not wanting to address it because there were several appointments that had been made by the union before and then canceled by them as well. Um, so we had not gotten an opportunity to sit and talk. Uh, nevertheless, um, the, the set up for the meeting today, Friday, mm -hmm. was that I was uh, still of the opinion that what I would like to do is structure our communication and dialogue in such a way that it is within the framework of the law, but also it's minuted. And we also know what you can expect from me and how I can expect from you. Um, what I wasn't expecting uh, is to have to be demanded to come out into an atmosphere that was already um, in an unrest, but I understand. Right. I so understand. You did go out and speak with the, with the force. Yes. Um, I must say that you know, persons can perceive, and I know I've had it done as well, mm -hmm. and I saw some some <laughs> comparisons to my sardine statement and um, whether that was disrespectful yeah. or not. And honestly, truthfully, um, frustration as a, as a female in the field and also dealing with all of the challenges that have been there for years mm -hmm. and us having this goal as government to actually deal with them. Yeah. We started since November with our interim government, mm -hmm. but some decisions had been made before mm -hmm. and expectations had been raised before. Correct. Can you go into what those expectations were that had been that created some of the animosity yes. that is currently present in yes. some of our officers? So for example, yesterday in speaking with um, with the, the officers etc that was out there I made a reference to the fact that um, um, you know what was done in the past specifically this symbolic signing of a function book because that's what the topic is about right. the function book um, it, it really if we were look to look at history there was a demand to sign sign the function books and my reference was I am not going to sign something for you, meaning the function books, 
knowing that the proper process has not been done. Right. So we need to sit and we need to talk about it. You will notice that I had put out an update with Balance, mm -hmm. which is the consultancy firm. And I intently left out, as I said yesterday, any discussion or reference to the unions because that meeting still, still needs to happen. happen. Yeah, yeah. But with respect to the unions and how things have been dealt with in the past, we need to clearly identify how that dialogue is supposed to happen. And this is what I've been trying to convey. Okay. Out of respect, let us set up things in the proper way that the law allows us to and dialogue that way. Not just with the unions, but also I believe the department heads should be a part of this, that they too can receive the updates because they, they play a role here. As a matter of fact, phase two, the, um, the uh, department heads have to be involved in that aspect in terms of the okay. scales, etc. What has, because I think many don't understand yeah. when you said that this symbolic signing of the function book, yeah. what exactly is in place and what is still needed to be done. So there are three phases to it. Uh, four in really, because the, 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 um, the unions come into play there in the fourth area of it. But the first was to identify the job descriptions, which has been done. Um, and that is what I made reference to is completed. Mm -hmm. The second is being able to identify the scales. Those discussions are going to happen with a work group between the Ministry General of Justice yes. and uh, Pay and No Central. Uh, and then you also now have that meet with, um, with the department heads and identify how many FTEs they need, right? Which is opportunities to hire persons or place persons. Right. So those three need to happen. And then you need so to the be first able one to. Happen and the second one is now happening. In, in, in process, correct, right. with the work group. Right. Um, just yesterday as well, Justice and Payano had another meeting to be able to identify that. Uh, and then next, we have to, to roll into the discussion of the FTEs. Um, so there's a process that needs to happen. But if it is a case and it is understandable, especially one of the, the I believe, one of the, the members or our presidents, I think it was the of president, the union? yeah, said it to me yesterday, like, uh, but we've done that. Right, yes. You know? Ms. Phillips. Yes. yes. No, I don't know if it's, well, okay, okay. whomever. So um, respectfully said it and i i get that i and that is exactly what i'm saying the frustration comes from we've figuring done that we've it past that already. we've done it right. so why are we back here and that is important for me as minister coming in to identify so i can answer your questions okay yeah? so i don't mean to cut you no, but uh, we have our segments okay. and that is the end of segment one okay. we will have three segments for this program today, we are watching episode 19 of PM Talks today, February, uh, July 17th. <laughs> I always flub something. something. Um, and we'll be right back. Prime Minister Talks with Honorable Prime Minister Silveria Jacobs. Safety tips on how to use your mask. Wear your mask in public places. When removing your mask, properly take your mask off by grabbing the bottom ties of your mask then the ties at the top and remove the mask. When disposing the mask, discard the mask in the trash can and do not litter. Safety first, don't touch your eyes, nose or mouth until washing your hands thoroughly for 20 seconds. These safety tips are brought to you by Collective Prevention Services and the Department of Communication. You ever hear Earthquake call and say, Hello, Mr. Mara, it's me. Earthquake are coming in Tuesday around 10. No, sir. Earthquake does arrive unannounced and when it comes, it'll shake all the sense and the sensibility out of it. Remain calm, stay inside and do the DCH. Drop, cover, hold on. Once the shake can start and you know it's an earthquake, make a quick move to a safe place. Don't run to the doorway or any exit and the stairs that may be broke up or even full of people. Elevator, avoid that because you might get in and then poof, power gone. And you're stuck in a box without air. Take cover under a strong table or a bed or crouch against an inside wall or in a corner and cover your face and your head with your arms. Remember, DCH. Drop, cover, hold on. Glass windows and doors, outside walls in an earthquake, that is bad news. Take care yourself. Most injuries during earthquakes happen when something drops and hit people entering or exiting a building. Last thing, don't bother and outside and ask, you feel it? You feel it? Remain calm, stay indoors until all the shaking stop and do the DCH. Drop, cover, hold on. This public service announcement was brought to you by Sedima and the government of St. Martin. 
Prime Minister Talks with Honorable Prime Minister Silveria Jacobs. And we're back, episode 19 of PM Talks today, July 17th. And my guest here today is the Honorable Minister of Justice, Ms. Anna Richardson. Hi. And when we left off, we were talking, Minister, about um, the function books. Mm -hmm. What is the takeaway message that you would like to give to the officers and the general public of St. Martin as it regards how you feel and what you're trying to achieve here? Yeah. Well, first of all, I just want to, again, extend apologies if I offended anyone um, by um, the compassion that I brought over or how passionate it was brought over yesterday in the communication. Indeed, the atmosphere in itself was already you know, too, too combative and aggressive. So my humble apologies for that. What I want to do is focus. I want to be able to focus and get this done. I want to be able to have a communication and relationship with the unions because I respect the fact that they do represent a vast majority of law enforcement workers throughout the justice chain. And so uh, it is imperative that we do develop a working relationship and I wanna have that. So I'm looking forward to the meeting this evening. Uh, we have presentations ready. We have uh, uh, much information to discuss and establishing that. Um, yeah, and so for me, it is a case that I want um, all the staff within the Ministry of Justice to understand that I have taken the oath and I am dedicated to fixing the various issues we have. Prison, function books, um, all throughout law enforcement, there are various areas that, you know, the list is, is extensive and um, I, I seek to be able to have the opportunity to do that and make it right. Thank you, Minister, for clarifying that because yeah. I see the passion with which you work. I see how hard you, you try to get your advices passed through the Council of Ministers and you will come to the different yeah. ministers, et cetera, where you need the, the collaboration. So yeah. I'm really hoping that we as a Council of Ministers have been really um, working together Absolutely. with our unions. We've had so many meetings. And, Absolutely. And I must say I have had to apologize too for the late answering of letters because yeah. you're, especially when you have... Uh, WICSU PSU, you have ABFO, NAPB, you have the WIC clue that represents them all. Mm -hmm. You feel that you answered, but you still didn't. Maybe you missed one or two yeah. letters in between. And I must say that we are really caught up with the yeah. COVID-19 recovery process. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what I was busy with as Prime Minister now falls on the different ministers themselves. So you are the one now that have to approve yeah. all the flights yes. um, while we still have restrictions yes. to allow certain planes to come in, etc. So yes. I know you're bogged down. But also, not to cut you across, but also I, I think it's so important, and I express this to my staff, that we should have um, immediate responses yes. just in terms of acknowledging at yes. least the letter. So yes. that's being put in place. As soon as a letter comes in, just send out the acknowledgement and give a, 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 timeline. a, a timeline as to, you know, maybe your timeline is not uh, realistic. realistic yes. So we would be responding to you thereafter, but something immediately. So my apologies for that as well. Lesson learned and it yes, will be addressed. Yes. And we're, fa we're facing challenging times yeah. and for many it's the first time and it is your first time. Yeah, it is. So um, we will definitely get through this together. I know your heart is in the right place. Yeah. And as soon as the public and your officers can see that i'm sure that the deliberations will go I'm better down the road yes yes so remain open yeah no, definitely. and i'm going to ask the audience also and those listening yeah. remain open yeah, i yeah. believe our minister's heart is in the right place yeah. and um i was able even to bring it forth in our kingdom council of ministers yeah. um because you know we had the motion yes. about the prison yes. um in a second chamber and i didn't feel like enough of st martin's position was brought forward okay. and we were missing the capital investments of 2019 to be able to invest in the plan for the prison and you've agreed for the technical assistance. Yes. And you've started the discussions. With Maybe Knox. you can talk a little yeah. bit about that because yes. a lot of people don't know where we are with where that. Where we are with that, okay. Uh, and what I try to do, Prime Minister, is put as much as possible that transparency out uh, via the media so mm -hmm. that the, the public as well is being brought up to date, up to date with all the work and activity that's happening behind the scenes. And when it comes to discussions with UNOPS, for example, um, those have been going very uh, fruitful. Uh, as you know, UNOPS has come highly recommended by our, our counterparts in the Netherlands, and they have an extensive portfolio of accomplished developments as such as these. In the field of prisons. Uh, in the field of prisons. They have shown us uh, a lot of examples of what they've done, um, and discussions are, you know, from, from 
the beginning to the end, but ensuring that all aspects are considered. Uh, it was quite um, uh, refreshing to get the input from them and the discussions are continuing. Uh, pretty soon we will have prison management a part of those discussions okay. because it's important for those who are working in that environment and not just management, but the prison guards, one or two prison guards who are very so involved in it to be able to represent the prison guards to speak of what the facility, facility should have, as it is now, what kind of limitations, right. what they'd like to see, the programs, etc. Um, so step by step, I want to be able to be um, pretty much educated about what has transpired. Because if you don't know your history in items, sometimes you won't know which direction you're going in because you're not well informed. I need to be well informed so oh, that what when, has happened before? when discussions come mm -hmm. up, I know what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. So um, bal I'm sorry, I balance again, the function books on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> UNOPS. Uh, UNOPS um, has done that presentation for us and i believe within the next two weeks we're going to have another meeting and that's where management and the officers will be uh prison guards rather will be invited to be able to to get some insight as well and give their input so, so in what is and what they what is what should be what should be that okay, input so you're busy well. with the detention plan now yes definitely and not just the de detention plan in itself but also looking at the programs that will be incorporated in that how are we going to rehabilitate i'd like to see our entire structure at some point in time include a halfway house right. i think that um you know once someone has served their time especially if the environment um that they were in involved in is, is where they would be thrusted back into giving them an opportunity to go through a halfway house where they can get on their feet get an apartment get a job get a, and, and get in the rhythm of doing their own thing but not have to go back into that invite might be very helpful for them right. you know um, so these are the things that we're having discussions about and the list is long but I know we have eight minutes in yes <laughs> I know where we're coming down to the end of the second segment yeah. now and I'm I'm very interested in this part because these were some of the conditions that were laid yes. on us when since 2015. Yes. Um, there has been collaboration in the justice chain and some people are like, but we don't see it. Mm -hmm. I know within the police force, um, based on the vote comes committee's reports, Good you course. see a lot of progress yes. there. Training has happened, but it's still very, very expensive yes. for St. Martin, yes. even with the assistance. Indeed, indeed it is. But, um, you know, what, one of the approaches that I've taken as well is to uh, remove the I'm telling you what to do and more right. so trying to be uh, taking the initiative of this is what we need and this is how we believe we can achieve it, present that, you know, and that approach as well has been turning to uh, or at least proving to be something that is working Giving in our fruit. better uh, interest. Great. Mm -hmm. um, so we are talking to Minister of Justice, Anna Richardson. Um, her plate is quite full yes. dealing with all of the justice challenges that have existed for a long, long time. Um, she's already given us some clarity as to the function books and her meeting with the unions this evening mm -hmm. at 5 p.m. Yes. on July 17th. And we'll be right back with the last segment of PM Talks for today, episode 19. Prime Minister Talks with Honorable Prime Minister Silveria Jacobs. You ever hear Earthquake call and say, Hello, Mr. Mara, it's me. Earthquake are coming in Tuesday around 10. No, sir. Earthquake does arrive unannounced and when it comes, it'll shake all the sense and the sensibility out of we. Remain calm, stay inside and do the DCH. Drop, cover, hold on. Once the shake can start and you know it's an earthquake, make a quick move to a safe place. Don't run to the doorway or any exit and the stairs that may be broke up or even full of people. Elevator, avoid that because you might get in and then poof, how gone. And you're stuck in a box with out air. Take cover under a strong table or a bed, or crouch against an inside wall or inner corner and cover your face and your head with your arms. Remember, DCH. Drop, cover, hold on. Glass windows and doors, outside walls in an earthquake, that is bad news. Take care yourself. Most injuries during earthquakes happen when something drops and hit people entering or exiting a building. Last thing, don't matter when outside and ask, you feel it? You feel it? Remain calm, stay indoors until all the shaking stop and do the DCH. Drop, cover, hold on. This public service this announcement was brought to you by Sedima and the government of St. Martin. Prime Minister Talks with Honorable Prime Minister Silveria Jacobs. 
Now we started out and we jumped right into the, the yeah. huge challenge of what we're facing. And usually when I have guests on PM Talks, I give go a little bit into their background. So we're oh. going to end with that today. Okay. And then you can tell us a little bit about what your goal is, what you want to achieve in these four years as Minister of Justice. Yeah. But tell them a little bit about who's Anna, what is your background in justice, especially what you think makes you um, a good candidate to be a justice minister, okay. and what your goals are. Sure. That's three things. Thank you. <laughs> well, hopefully I remember all. Take okay, it so away. So first of all, I um, acquired my um, degree, bachelor's degree in sociology with a concentration in criminal justice because I did aspire to be a criminal attorney. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, and then um, I had gotten accepted to John Jay University to, to do my law degree, but 9-11 happened, and that just kind of changed everything. Anyways, um, I worked in the cabinet of Dennis Richardson, the former Minister of Justice, uh, some years back, and that um, was quite an experience. And I've also worked as an operations manager in bailiff service. So I, I love law. I love criminal justice. Um, being in this capacity is, is quite interesting. Um, and I come with a lot of passion in it <laughs> there's no other way for me to explain how i feel about being in this capacity um, i am really eager about accomplishing a lot uh, i'm really eager about um, recognizing exactly the grievances that our staff has and um, in understanding that it is important to address it yes and this is not today that the staff is dealing with it it's years and years um, so that's where considering the frustration that comes is where in. yeah that is where the frustration comes i totally understand it um, what i would like to is an opportunity to work at getting it done it's yes. not going to happen overnight um, but i do understand the grievances um, and, and, and I just want to I just want to work I just want to work and get it done so besides the function books and ensuring that all your employees are properly placed and properly remunerated yes. for the work that they do yes um, what are the other goals that you have for the well, next four years well we know that um, immigration is also within the portfolio of the Minister of Justice um, and I am a minister who is um, solely focused on operating within the law and policy that's it um, most recently, the Ministry of Justice and the Ministry of VSR uh, signed a covenant to work together because we would know that our labor uh, permits go uh, coincide with our residence permits. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a lot of persons within our community that have tried their utmost best to be a law abiding citizens within our community and wanting to have their items uh, put in place. But they have experienced some unfortunate uh, circumstances, mm -hmm. uh, but they need to be heard. And, right. and, and the approach is for us to, to do proper assessments. Um, we also know that information in this regard is needed. And mm -hmm. so behind the scenes, we are deliberating on two approaches, uh, whether we would set up an information call desk or office where you would have officers or immigration officers oh. able to take phone calls and communicate the steps persons would need to take to be able to apply. Um, or is it a case that we will do um, the ability to call in and you can select the language that you need that information mm -hmm. in and it would be a pre-recorded giving you that information. In addition to that, we have our website that's coming up pretty soon, both for the Ministry of Justice as well as the Immigration Department. Information, information, information. Um, you know, in the discussions, we have a work group that is assessing. They're really pushing between 8 and 12, 8 a.m. and 12 p.m., assessing every application wanting to ensure that everyone is considered is heard um, so it is quite a, a large undertaking uh, because over the years uh, it has not necessarily received the attention that it should um, mm -hmm. and so it has become such a build-up right. and the approach is to be able to respectfully give everybody an opportunity to state what their situation is so that is another focus on, on there and the list is quite long there's a lot of things that's happening at the same time. Right. Um, but um, like I said before, you know, respectfully, I just want to be able to have the opportunity to focus on it and get as much as possible done. Well, I know it's not going to be an easy task. Yeah. Um, a lot of our challenges that government face, um, and it's unfortunate now that um, everyone expects it to be resolved in the shortest possible time. I think we really have to be realistic, uh, especially with our lower finances. Uh, the government of St. Martin 
we are in a basically a depressed economy. Less is coming in. We are have we are being you know pushed also by our senior partner within this um, kingdom to accept certain conditions, conditions that would even make it a little bit tougher before yeah. it gets better. better. Yeah. And um, so we're really deliberating how we can really stand for ourselves as much as possible. And that's what we're doing. Yeah. We have the national development vision that was launched yesterday and will be available on Monday for all to see. And, and within that, you will see also and can have an input because it's still a draft. And the community is going to have the opportunity to have stakeholder discussions, wherein, of course, the justice chain is also represented. Yes. So I know a lot of people um, have ideas, and this is your opportunity for you to help us to ensure that the vision we have for St. Martin is what is in keeping with what the population needs. Yes. And we look forward to your participation in that. Minister, I want to say thank you once again yes. for being my guest on PM Talks, and I look forward to us having follow-up talks. You have the last 30 seconds to just send it home. Yes, good. Before I say my last message to the public, though, I want to say to you, uh, I said this to you in private and I'll say to you in, 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 in public. Um, Prime Minister, it is an honor to serve under your leadership. Um, you are a dynamic woman. I look up to you. Um, I tip my hat to you <laughs> in wow. a lot of ways, too. And I am learning as well uh, from you. And um, in that, you give me a lot of coaching and guidance in how to deal with things and I just want to publicly say thank you for that. You're welcome. And to the viewers, um, especially to all the staff of um, uh, Ministry of Justice, again, I'm saying that I'm just seeking to work and to make things right. Um, once again, my humble apologies if my tone came over a little too aggressive uh, yesterday. That was not the intention. And I look forward to us having a fruitful relationship going forward. And not just to the officers, but to their families and anyone else who might have felt that it was not brought over the way that they felt it should. So my apologies for that. And um, I look forward to us never having that again, but having a fruitful and positive relationship going forward. So thank you everyone for tuning in and to you and your staff and everyone who's a part of this. Thank you. This has been, thank you, Minister. I appreciate it. And together as government, we seek to, of course, be more transparent and educate the population as to what exactly we're doing. So stay tuned to more episodes of PM Talks. This has been episode 19 with our Minister of Justice, Anna Richardson. Be safe, St. Martin. We are a blessed nation.